Hey guys, Matt from Worship Sound Guy here. I've got another question that we got on Instagram from Laura Upshaw. Um, she asked, in in-ear monitor mixes, are you supposed to pan certain instruments? If so, which ones? I play keys, but we have acoustic, electric, drums, bass, and three vocals. So this is a great question because I feel like a lot of times in-ear monitors, uh, the quality of the mixes kind of just get brushed over. You know, no one, unless you have a monitor engineer with a separate uh, console, a lot of times it's more of like a utility mix where let me just make sure I can hear what I need to and, and that's good. But I honestly think that it's not super hard to get a great in-ear mix, especially if you've got a great band and everyone's putting their best foot forward. Um, it should be really easy to get a solid in-ear mix. So specifically to address the panning, uh, the short answer is yes. There are lots of things that should be panned and I 100% recommend always running ears in stereo. Um, and to go hand in hand with that, as many sources as you can run stereo in the in-ears will just give your mix so much more space. So to answer your question in regards to where should things be panned in a monitor mix, obviously that depends on what the instrument is um, and it depends on honestly your personal preference. So I'm gonna say what I recommend, but just kind of know it's very subjective and you gotta find what works for you. Um, but if you don't have a starting point, then this is what I recommend for you. So. Uh, step one would definitely be to make sure that your in-ear mix is in stereo, which if we're talking panning, then I'm assuming it is. But um, if your in-ear mixes are in mono, it's gonna be really, really hard to get a good mix. So do whatever you gotta do to get it in stereo. And then secondly, make sure that as many sources as you can coming into your monitor mix are stereo. So whether you're using you know, avioms or personal monitors um, or you've got a monitor engineer at a desk, just make sure that you get as many stereo sources coming in as possible. So this would be things like uh, your keys, making sure that you've got keys left and right, um, any track stems that you're using, make sure those are in stereo. Um, things like overheads, um, even electric guitars. We've talked about a little trick to make a mono guitar um, stereo, but basically if you, even if you only have one mic on one amp, you can take that, double patch it to a second channel, um, and then delay one side by, you know, between nine to 12 or 13 milliseconds. And then you take one of them, pan it all the way one way and pan the other one the other direction. And it'll create a, you know, a big stereo sound for your guitars. So if you have enough channels, to pull that off, then go ahead. Um, and all of that is gonna help just spread things out across the stereo image in your mix. So um, I, once you get all those stereo sources in, make sure they're all actually panned um, hard left and right. Um, not, you know, sometimes you'll have keys left and keys right, but they're both straight up and down, which defeats the purpose. So make sure you've got left panned all the way left, right panned all the way right. Um, next, I would say would be vocals. So um, if you're a vocalist, um, obviously I would keep your vocal center, um, but then make sure you take any other vocals and pan them uh, usually wherever they're standing. So if you've got vocalists on either side of you, you know, pan the one on, on your left side all the way to your left, pan the one on your right side all the way to your right. And if you happen to be the one on the end, um, typically what I find works best is the one that's right next to you, go ahead and pan it um, the direction that they're standing, and then the one that's on the far side of the stage, go ahead and pan the opposite direction. Um, but what that does is it leaves your vocal, you know, right up front and center, right down the middle for you. And then the other ones you can actually hear a lot better at a lot lower volume because they're only in one side, so they kind of stand out to you. Um, so that's what I would do with vocals. Same for band. Um, for band, I would take, you know, and kind of evenly spread out your male and female vocals to, to either side, and I would definitely hard pan. Um, which hard panning just means it's not just sort of this way, it means it's either all the way in the left or all the way in the right. And it does, it is gonna feel a little weird at first, especially if you've got someone leading a song and they're only in your left ear. Um, but for the sake of your overall mix, you're gonna be able to hear them better, you're gonna be able to hear your instrument better, um, and all that, it, it's gonna feel weird at first, but if you're able to get past that and get used to it, your whole mix will be a lot cleaner. So that's what I would do with vocals. Um, and then other things like guitars, um, again, usually if you just kind of lean them, you know, maybe, you know, 50% or so to where they're standing, um, that'll kind of just spread things out. And then whatever you're playing, make sure that's front and center because it'll help you pick it out of the mix without having to crank your own volume so loud that you can't hear anything else in the mix. So that would be my recommendations um, in panning. Um, and again, if for whatever reason you're using in-ears and they're not stereo, make sure you get them stereo. God gave you two ears for a reason. If you want to learn more about mixing in-ears, some tips and tricks, we actually have in our Sound Guy Essentials course, we have a whole video dedicated to building an Avion mix. Um, so make sure and check that out if you haven't already. Um, and if you want more videos like this, make sure and let us know down in the comments. And while you're at it, make sure you like this video and subscribe to get more just like it. And if you haven't already, make sure you connect with us on social media, at Worship Sound Guy, that's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And hopefully we'll talk to you soon.